Hey there, Angular folks, and welcome back. Here's a simple form built entirely with the new Signal Forms API. Signal Forms are great. Validation feels clean, and the UI reacts exactly how you expect. But how are you supposed to submit them? How do you handle it all? Do you need to add a bunch of custom state and logic? In this video, I'll show you the right way to do it using the new Submit API, including async submission, loading state, and mapping server-side validation errors directly back to form fields. This is like the missing piece that makes signal forms feel actually usable in real apps. All right, let's start by taking a closer look at what we already have. Right away, notice that the Create Account button is disabled. That's because the form is invalid. We haven't entered a username or email yet. Now, I'll click into the username field and blur it. As soon as I do that, we see a validation error. This is client-side validation running immediately. Same thing with the email field. Click in, blur out, and the error appears. Now I'll enter a valid username. The error disappears. I'll do the same for email, and that error disappears too. And now, notice the submit button is enabled. So far, so good. This is exactly what we'd expect from a validated form. Now let's try submitting it. I'll click Create Account, and the browser actually refreshes. That's obviously not what we want. There's no submission logic, no async handling, no way to surface server validation errors. This is the gap we need to fix. Let's switch over to the code so we can see why this is happening. First, I'll open the component template. At the top, we have a plain form element, no submit handler attached at all. Next, here's the username input, wired up using the field directive. That directive is what connects this input to the signal form. Below that, we conditionally render validation errors, but only when the field has been touched and is invalid. That's why we had to click into the field and blur out to see the error. If we scroll down, we'll see the email field is set up the exact same way, using the same field directive and the same error handling logic. And at the bottom, we have the submit button, disabled when the form is invalid. So everything here is working perfectly. We just don't have submission logic yet. Now let's switch to the component TypeScript. One of the first things we see is a model signal. This is the backing data for the form. Next, we create the form using the form function and pass in that model. Inside this function, we define our field level validators. We've got a required validator and a minimum length validator on username and a required validator on email. All of this is client-side validation. It's fast, it's synchronous, and it runs before we ever attempt to submit anything. Now, in a real application, form submission usually means calling a service. So for this demo, I've already created a mock signup service. This simulates a backend call. It returns either a successful result or an object containing field-specific server errors. This distinction is important because server validation is very different from client validation. Client validation checks shape and format. Server validation enforces business rules. All right, now it's time to actually make this form submit. This is where things get interesting. Signal Forms gives us a new submit API that handles a lot of the hard stuff for us. First, I'll inject the signup service so we can use it. Next, I'll add an onSubmit method. This is the function we'll call when the form actually submits. The first thing I do inside this function is call prevent default on the event. This prevents the browser from performing a full page refresh when the form submits. Now here's the important part where we use the new submit function and pass in our form. The second argument is an async callback. 
What's really nice about this is that Angular will only call this callback if the form is valid. It will also automatically mark all fields as touched and track submission state for us. Inside this callback, we get access to the form's field tree. Let's create a variable to store the current value. This gives us the current form value already validated. Next, I'll pass that value into the signup service to simulate calling the backend. Now here's where the real power of submit shows up. If the server rejects the submission, we return validation errors instead of throwing errors or manually setting state. When this happens, we'll create another variable to push errors into. We'll type this variable with the validation error interface using the with optional field property. This interface represents a validation error that can optionally target a specific field. Now let's add a condition to check if there are errors on the username field using the field errors property from our signup result. If so, we'll use our errors array to push in a new error object. First, we'll pass the field, which will be our username field. Then we need to add an error kind, which is just sort of a unique category for these messages. Let's call it server. And then the last thing we need to pass is the error message to display. In this case, we'll grab the message from the service. Okay, so that will handle server errors for the username field. Now, let's do the same for email. First, we'll add the condition. Then, we'll use the errors array to push a new error object. We'll give it the email field this time. We'll give it a kind of server again. And we'll give it the error message from the service. Okay, now comes the key decision point. If we have errors, we return them. Returning errors tells Angular, do not submit the form, surface these errors instead. If there are no errors, we return undefined. Returning undefined tells Angular, everything's good. The form submitted successfully. Then, outside of this, to make this obvious in the demo, I'll also log the submitted value to the console. And we'll return undefined here too, since if we reach this point, we have no errors. Okay, that should be everything we need for our submission logic. Now, we just need to make a few tweaks in the template. The main thing we need to do here is wire up our new onSubmit method. To do this, we'll use the submit event on the form element itself. This connects the native form submit to our custom handler. At this point, we're good to go. Our form should submit properly, but there are a few small adjustments I think we should make to the submit button to make it more useful to the end user. For one, I think we should make the button disabled while the form is submitting to prevent multiple submissions while we communicate with the server. Well, with signal forms, this is easy. We just need to use the submitting property. Then, let's also use this to swap out the button label during this period as well. There, now it should make more sense. Okay, let's save all of this and give it a try. All right, when we click in and blur the fields, the client validation still works. So that's good. Now let's enter values that pass client validation but fail server validation. Okay, so the client errors still disappear because the form is technically valid based on the required and min length validators in our signal form. Also, the button is now enabled, so Let's try to submit the form. Nice. Now the button is disabled and the label changes to creating while we communicate with the mock server. And there we go. Server validation errors appear in the same UI as client validation. Also, remember the console log we added in the submit function? Well, nothing was logged out, so that means that it didn't ever submit successfully. So with the submit function, Internally, it knows when the form submits successfully. We don't need to do anything separate to handle it. 
Let's add a valid username and email and then try again. Nice. This time we actually submitted the data. Pretty cool stuff, right? This is why the new submit API matters. It gives you async submission, loading state, automatic touched handling, and server errors that land exactly where users expect them. It kind of completes the signal form story. If you're building real Angular apps for the future, this is going to be the pattern you want. If this was helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. And hey, if you want to represent Angular in the real world, check out the Shieldworks gear linked below. It's built for developers who treat their work like a real craft. All right, that's all for today. See you in the next one.